Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Ram. Today we're taking a look at a quick mod spotlight and the Skylon, which is a work in progress. This is the 12th work in progress save because I make multiple saves of my craft as I work on them. This is, of course, inspired by a real life concept called Skylon. That is why it's called Skylon. Uh, you can see it has crew cap crew capability. It also has a tiny cargo bay. It also has a, one of these overweight clampatrons. And there's one small problem with this and I'm going to demonstrate the mod to you now. This mod is called Intake Build Aid, and as you can see, when I hit F6 over an engine, it tells me what intakes are linked to that engine. Now, you might notice, okay, there's the engine in red and intakes in blue. You might notice that on the right engine, we have just the intakes in front of it, as you'd expect. On the left engine, however, we also have this intake at the back linked up to it, which I mostly put there for style, although now that I'm looking at it, mm, kind of ugly. So what will happen when we get high up into the atmosphere and we're starting to run out of intake air? Well, the right engine's going to run out of air first, and then the left engine's going to have more air, and we're going to start spinning. I had this actually happen. I didn't think about it. I'd forgotten that this was actually a problem that can happen in Kerbal Space Ram. But what this mod does, it doesn't just tell you how they're lined up. It also allows you to fix them. Let me open up the work in progress 13. First of all, you might notice this says the work in progress 13 intake fix. This is actually before I fix the intakes. But the first thing you'll notice is that we have a structural cone at the back instead of a intake. And that's because you need an even number of intakes for this to work. Additionally, I've actually added intakes on the bottom here, but as you'll see in a moment, the left engine is hooked up to, well, now it's correct. A moment ago it was wrong. I don't know why that changed. Interesting. Well, it's slightly awkwardly placed in that the intakes are across from each other on here, but as you can see, they are symmetrical. This is after it fixed it. Before I fixed it, the left engine had all of the intakes on the bottom of the plane linked to it and both of the intakes on its side linked to it, and the right engine just had the two intakes on its side linked to it. Now F6 will give you these pretty little indicators like I've been doing this whole time. F7 actually reassigns things and actually puts things in the proper place. Basically what it does, and wow, you can see it's decided this time to do things a bit differently. There's a bit more crossover. I don't know why it decided to do that. It's, I don't know how it works exactly, but as you can see, it's rebalanced the intakes so that there is an equal amount of intake going into each of these engines. Which is strange the way it did it, but whatever. Basically, the way KSP's internal logic work works, depending on the order of how you've placed intakes and engines, different intakes and different engines will get preference in the air intake. And this fixes that by making it so that, as far as the game is concerned, you placed these parts in a different order. This is the Skylon Mark 1 work in progress 14. This one has had the intakes fixed as I'll demonstrate now. Actually, okay, see here's what I'm talking about. See how it's saying all the intakes are assigned to that one? Well, they're not. Now it's saying they're all assigned to that one. That is interesting. Well, that seems to be something of a bug with that mod. However, I do know that whenever you assign things, it does actually Oh, now the intakes are just stuck being displayed on, even though they're not part of the... Well, that's interesting. But even though it has that bug happening, it does work, and I've used it to fix this design, because this design had that problem. And that's about all I have to say about that mod. It's called Intake Build Aid, and it's very useful. Now I'm just going to move on to just briefly pointing out some details on the Skyline. Notice that the intake is slightly... The intake? The cockpit is slightly angled down. Also, the engines and intakes are slightly angled down. Also, the rear is slightly angled up. It's just, it's very, very subtle. It's hard to notice, but those tiny little bits of differences in angle actually make, they actually make a difference. They make not much of a difference, but they make a difference in that, well, actually, they make an undetectable amount of difference in terms of the intakes, but having the intakes more into the air intake stream, aka having them angled down slightly because you're angled up when you're going up, that actually helps, but in such a small amount that it's, I, I really can't, like, measure it. I mean, I'm sure I could measure it if I took the time to and tested with, uh, MechJeb and, you know, flying it, but I can't be bothered. However, the big difference that angling this bit up on the back makes, that actually makes a big difference because this design is actually kind of floppy. Oh, the highlighting is still stuck on. Anyhow, as you might have noticed when it loaded, 
the rear end kind of sagged down. The front end would sag a little more if it didn't have the landing gear there to stop it. Also, you might notice on the rear we have a landing gear embedded in the back as well as a structural piece, and those are there to act as a kind of rear tail strike guard to keep you from having issues with the rear end hitting the ground. Also, I, I, I'm just really happy with the way I did the um, ailerons and elevators and the yaw. Like, I, I just... I just wanted to point that out because doesn't that just look cool? I think it does. In any case, I'm going to just go ahead and take off. I'm not actually going to fly this one to space. I'm just going to go down the end of the runway, show how this rear guard keeps the rear from being broken off. So, like, first of all, when you're pulling up, you don't want to accidentally strike the back, so that helps there. And that's the that's actually a secondary benefit. That's not why I added it. The reason I added it is because on landing, if you land with the tail just a actually I, I haven't managed to land this thing without having some form of guard back there because the times that I've landed it before adding that the rear end would sag just enough during the touchdown to impact with the ground and be destroyed which you know if you're making a reusable plane having part of it get itself destroyed when you land is not really the best for reusability so anyhow that's all there is to say really I'm going to um, land this a bit quicker than I should. In fact, I, yeah, I need to pull up way more than that. Ooh. Yeah, this thing, there you go. And the rear guard kept us from breaking the tail at all, especially that t in that case, we actually landed on it. And you see it kind of bounces along. But see how that small bringing it up at the rear makes it stay higher in the air? If you'd seen it before this, you'd see it dipping quite a bit more. Thanks for watching. As always, see you in space.